and you have the word light in the original word that illuminates, like you know, in those cartoons, finally understand you have the light bulb coming in. Okay. Now, let's take another passage and um, another fundamental passage. After you've talked about Second Timothy three sixteen, there is another passage that you can bring to your friend whom you're teaching. It's Second Peter one twenty one. And this is going to be the driving force. And we're going to try to write a definition. It's going to be a daunting task, but we're going to try to write the definition of what inspiration means. Are you with me? Or did I lose you already? Hey, maybe snacks are holding you down. Uh, 2 Peter 1, and uh, Andrew, if you could please... Uh, thank you so much. 1 Peter 1, 21. Can, uh, 2 Peter 1, 21. Did I say first? Yes, yeah, Second Peter. Did I say first? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Second Peter one twenty one. Can somebody read it loud and clear? Amen. We see here again to understand better inspiration. This text tells us that the Holy Spirit moved them. Now, in the original. A language of the Bible. The word was pheromenoi. Now what does that mean? It's a very important word and you need to write it down and I'll explain to you why. Because it means to be carried or blown. To be carried or blown away. And Luke, if I, I don't I didn't put it on my notes, but if I'm correct, Luke, when talking about the winds that tossed the ship of Jesus, used the same language. And so, we see here that this word means, helps us understand that the Bible writers were born along by the Spirit as a ship is born along by the wind. They were under His control, the Spirit control. Do we understand that? Basically, 2 Peter tells us that they didn't just write whatever they wanted, and we'll talk about that in a minute, they were carried by the Spirit. Whatever you see here is carried by the Spirit. Now what is the first thing we're going to try to understand this passage? But the first thing that 2 Peter talks about. 2 Peter 1.21 We're going to talk uh, for prophecy never had its origin in the will of men. But men actually, could you put the New King James Version because the NIV is failing me in uh, this situation. But the, the, the New King James, that's why I prefer the New King James on a general basis. Holy men of God spoke. Now the first agent, the first criteria to be, to know if there is inspiration or not, they must be holy men. But we'll see in a minute, inspiration does not mean you get converted or you get perfect. Did prophets sin? Did Moses sin? Oh yeah, big time. Amen. He can correct you. Uh, I don't know who said yeah, Amen. He can. But you will and I've I've met Catholics who believe that, well, you know, John the Baptist was no sin at all. And they will tell you that uh, Bible writers had no sin. It's not what the Bible teaches. And it is important, we'll we'll see later on. It's important to go back to what inspiration really means. But yes, they were separated, they were consecrated by God, and their sins sometimes blocked them from inspiration. I'll give you one example. Miriam. Was Miriam a prophetess? Yes, yes she was. Uh, did she receive inspiration from God? Yes, she did. But after her sin and rebellion against Moses, and you can read that in uh, Numbers 12. Uh, in uh, Numbers 12, yeah, we won't take it, but uh, you can read it uh, later. You see, she rebels against uh, Moses, and she pretty much shows racism against Zipporah, who was dark-skinned. I don't know how dark, but... From that point on, Miriam fades in the background, and the only time we read from her is at her death in Numbers uh, 20. So you see, inspiration can cut you off. And King Nebuchadnezzar... Had, did he receive inspiration? Did he receive dreams from God? 
Yes, he did. But And here we see two, actually, Daniel 2, Daniel 4. But after Daniel 4, we see Babylon falling in apostasy, horrible apostasy, so much that they used the temple cuffs and violated them. And Nebuchadnezzar fades in the background. So first, holy men, consecrated men. Men or women, as we saw with Miriam. Then, it says that they were moved. Now, what does that mean by that? The Holy Spirit moves the prophet, but the Holy Spirit does not remove their humanity. And we need to understand that clearly. 1 Corinthians 14.32 says, And the spirit of the prophet, the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophet. What does that mean? It means that inspiration is not going to erase who you are. It's not going to erase the fact that you're a sinner. You will be a sinner. It doesn't convert like we saw uh, all the time. It also means, and this is a very important principle, a lot of people ask you, why do you have to go back to the time the Bible was written? Why do you have to look at the original text? Why do you have to look at the custom of the text? Because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And as Common Point rightly said, God uses customs or history to teach you lesson. And today in hermeneutics, now this is a big word, but it's important. I'll erase that. Hermeneutics, now what does that mean? It's basically the, uh, I'm not going to call it a science, but it's interpreting, in, uh, my tongue is interpreting the Bible. And my tongue is heavy. Understanding the Bible. And so those are words that you'll get familiar with over time in the course. But to really understand, to interpret it and know what it said, we need to go back to what the time it was written. Because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Now, I will go very briefly, but you can read, and it's more detailed in the notes, to understand better the relationship, and we'll study that a little more. <coughs> God gave us an object lesson. Hello? Yes. God gave us an object lesson. He told us, he told Moses... Well, I'm going to make you God to Aaron, and Aaron will be your prophet. Now, did Moses become God? No, obviously not. But, God teach us about the, his relationship with prophets by giving us an example in Moses and Aaron. What happened? Moses gave the messages to Aaron, and then Aaron went to Pharaoh and delivered them. How does inspiration work? God gives his message to his prophets, and the prophets delivers them to the people. So that's what it means to be moved. But even if the message is said by the prophet, even if the prophets say it in their words, they acknowledge that it was the word of God. Now let's be clear. They did say it in their own words. Jeremiah 1.1, 1, 1, the words of Jeremiah. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, Proverb 1.1. Solomon says, well, that's my word. Jeremiah said, that's my word. But, and, oh, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. But we're going to see later on what I wanted to say is that they did attribute the authorship to God. And there's a very funny detail, funny, interesting. Alan White, talking about the people who wrote the Bible never called them authors. They all, she always called them writers. And so it is important to, to note the difference. But let's be clear. They were moved by the Spirit, which means that they gave the message in their words. Now, sometimes, and uh, basically this thought inspiration, I'll uh, detail uh, that. And I have 
17 minutes left. <laughs>